Hey guys, Matt from Crank Engineering, and I was messaging with a friend of mine, and she's got a bike in a competition next year, so she's got to do a bit of a rebuild. So today, do you need any help with anything particular on YouTube? She said, just off the top of my head, choosing the right product for the right cleaning, stripping, or lubricating job by metal type or intended purpose. Does my head in. <laughs> Righto, Cal. This one's for you. Let's have a quick look at my favorite shop fluids and lubes. All right, let's go through all the stuff on the bench, but the two big ones I didn't bring up from down there. One was kerosene, and kerosene's probably my favorite cleaning product for cleaning greasy, oily parts, and I do have my parts washer filled with kerosene. Not the most health or environmentally friendly, but uh, when you're working in your own shop and the cost of this stuff is a factor, kerosene, is a good way to do it for me in my shop uh, because it's relatively cost effective and you can use it for a bunch of other purposes as well including starting fires and things like that but uh, kerosene is my favorite cleaning product mineral turpentine i think you might call that mineral spirit in the united states if you're doing a lot of painting with oil-based paint you'll need that for cleanup anyway so keep the painting stuff a little bit separate but that's probably something you'll need so let's have a look at the stuff on the bench number one uh, is some sort of WD-40 or CRC or whatever the product's called in your part of the world. Uh, for me, it's cheaper to buy it in, this is four litres, what's that, a gallon? Cheaper to buy it in bulk and then just decant it into their little spray bottle. This is about $35, I think, last time I bought it. And while the aerosol cans are very useful, uh, it's not the cheapest way to do it, and I use tons of this stuff. So it's great, I believe, according to the internet, don't believe everything you read on the internet, but I believe it's got some sort of derivative fish oil in it. So it does have some lubricating properties, and I find it has some rust preventative properties and some cleaning properties as well. So even my steel workbenches, before I finish for the day, I'll spray them with WD-40 and give them a wipe just to protect them from surface rust. Your steel parts, you can just give them a quick spray with WD-40 to protect them from surface rusts in between other things that you're doing. Um, yeah, I use this pretty much all the time. So number one for me is, again, bulk purchase WD-40. For other cleaning purposes, especially prior to welding, uh, acetone is my go-to. Now don't use this on painted surfaces because you know acetone is the same stuff they put in nail polish remover and if that removes nail polish or paint it'll take paint off other things too so don't make the mistake of using it on painted surfaces. If you need to clean a painted surface use a wax and grease remover. Should have got that from underneath the bench. But acetone for cleaning prior to welding. So if you're doing welding Especially TIG, you really should have some acetone handy. And again, I buy this in a four litre gallon container and I just decan it into the small uh, container for use around the shop. Now, highly flammable. So if you're welding, make sure you put the lid on before you start welding. So don't be the guy that sets your shop on fire. Okay. Um, not essential, but pretty handy in some cases is starting aid or an ether-based starting aid. So this one's <laughs> just an Australian one, which we think is pretty funny. It's called Start Your Bastard. So an ether starting aid is just used to help get an engine going. So if you've been working on a bike for a couple of years and it hasn't started, you might have trouble getting it going. So uh, it's just an aerosol can, just spray it into the intake. So I'd take the air filter off, spray it into the intake. For me, the biggest... Uh, learning from using this is if the engine will run briefly on the error start or start your bastard or whatever the product is that you're using if it'll fire and run for a couple of seconds that's at least a good indication that everything's working and that you've got air and you've got spark so you're giving it a really you know volatile dose of fuel with this so if it doesn't run after that's probably a fuel issue 
don't quote me, but possibly a fuel issue. So handy and not that expensive. I've had this tin for years. It's a bit rusty as you can see, so lasts a long time. As long as you don't use it to start your car every day. Um, you're gonna need some sort of a grease for axles and bearings and things like that. So just a decent quality. This one's HTB, I think it's high temperature bearing grease. So it's used for ideal for front wheel bearings in motor vehicles with disc, disc brakes operating at very high temperatures. So just a standard grease is useful for putting axles back in and lubricating bearings and things. Uh, you're gonna need a chain lube, whatever brand you like, uh, whichever one you find works the best on, on your bike. I mean, of course you can just use uh, an engine oil even and, and coat the chain in that, but that flings off when the chain's moving quickly. So sometimes these lubes are a bit better because they'll tend to stick a bit more and not fling off as much. You're gonna need brake fluid to suit your bike. So this is a dot three. So you need to check on your bike in the service manual what brake fluid you need on your bike and just purchase one that uh, matches your bike's requirements. Now, this stuff absorbs moisture. So in theory, once it's been opened and it's got a gut full of air from the atmosphere in here, it'll start absorbing moisture. Now, the big problem with that on brake fluid is once it gets really hot, so above 100 degrees, then the water is going to boil off. Uh, so that's bad. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had brakes get that hot on a bike, especially on a street bike, we're not racing. So just be cautious that this stuff's not supposed to be in contact with air, so don't leave it open. And if you're not sure, this stuff's pretty cheap, so I would normally just go and buy a brand new one if I wasn't sure how long this stuff had been sitting on the shelf, you know, pre-opened. Fork oil to suit your bike. Look at the service manual, find out what you're supposed to be using. Get some of that. Uh, okay. I've got old Harleys, so they generally tend to rattle themselves um, to pieces. So you're gonna need some sort of a thread locking compound. And I've got a couple, I've got a few of them here. A few different containers of thread lockers. So they generally come in these tiny little containers. And generally you find two grades. One's a, a permanent, uh, thread locker and the other one's not permanent or semi-permanent thread locker. So the permanent one will generally require quite a bit of heat to release the bond. So you'll need to use some sort of a torch or a heat gun of some description to heat it up to break the bond. So they are very strong adhesives almost. So great in some applications, but if the bolt does have to come out at some point and you think it will have to come out, then just use one of the standard thread lockers and they'll work just fine and you just need to give them quite a bit of force to break the seal once you're releasing them. So thread locker, good stuff. In here, I've also got just some general multi-purpose lightweight oil, it's just for general lubricating stuff that's supposed to be running together um, or moving together. Uh, this one came with a packet of, or a display, a, supply of WD-40 or something. Now, if you've got air tools and you've got air tool oil, that's also an acceptable um, lightweight oil you could use for this purpose too. So it really depends on what you've got. So if you've got a compressor and air tools, you'll have compressor oil and air tool oil. You don't need anything else, just use some of the stuff you've got. Now we're not, again, launching rockets, we're just keeping stuff lubricated as it requires it. And that's pretty much it there. The only other thing that I think is really cool is this brush on electrical tape. Now sometimes, depending on where you are on the bike and how much stuff you have to pull off to get to something, sometimes you can't get a piece of electrical tape into a particular area, and sometimes this stuff's really handy. So it's literally a, um, whoop, oh, mine's going all hard. Oh no, bro. So it's literally a rubberized type coating that you use in place of electrical tape. So I'm gonna to have to go and buy another one. Here in Australia, you get this from JCAR, which is an electronic supplier. I'm gonna see if I can find it on Amazon for all you guys in other places in the world, and so you can get hold of it too. But pretty handy, gets you out of trouble occasionally. It's uh, pretty useful. So they would be my top picks for stuff you'll need around the shop. And hopefully that was useful, Cal. Good luck with the bike build. See you next time.